Hello again, and you survived another one. Good for you, Russ Gibb, jumping up and down. And my guest today is Steve Fid uh, Fielder. I nearly said Fiddler, but it's Fielder. And he's chairman of the National Liberation uh, Libertarian uh, <laughs> Party. I can't keep track of that. Ballot Access Committee, whatever that's all about. In fact, most of us are still wondering what libertarians are. We're going to have to find out. So we'll be talking to Stephen in just a moment. If you're into politics, hang on. If you think that democracy is alive and kicking, it's kicking. I'm not sure it's alive all the time, but we'll be talking to Steve in just a minute. Well, you've been wondering what I've been jumping up and down about. I guess it's my buddy Kennedy, Senator Edward Kennedy, <clears throat> that pillar of virtue in Washington, D.C. Did you watch him the other night when the president was speaking? He sat there with his hands. Never once did he applaud, or at least did I see that on television. And I thought to myself, uh, that's, that's great. You know, that shows a lot of class. Uh, I was very upset about Mr. Kennedy, Senator Kennedy. Uh, you know, the dynasty is in place. They're still working, thank goodness, for Scotch whiskey. And uh, all of the insanity that goes on down there in Washington. You know, I don't care whether you like the governor of Michigan. I don't particularly, he doesn't turn me on. But he's our governor and I'll give him due respect. And if I'm at a speech with the man, at least I'm gonna show common courtesy. I'm not sure that Kennedy, you know, there's somehow they're beyond and the Democratic Party bigwigs just leave me cold. They've lost touch with reality in my opinion. It's about time they come back to reality. They think they're, they think they're on another roll. They, they've forgotten. They, they don't understand. Their day in the sun. The sun is setting on the Democratic Party because they've got too many. You know, there's a point when you, put, you can only put so many little things in a cage and then forget it. And they've got all these party things, all these groups that they're trying to juggle. And you're going to, uh, you're invariably going to have problems. And believe me, the Democratic Party has problems. Now, if you, you probably say, well, what about the Republicans? <laughs> well, I can go about the Republicans, too. They have, they have plenty of problems going on in their, their little bailiwick. I mean, who do they have outside of Reagan? I see no one in the, Dem in the Republican Party that can do anything. Well, maybe it's time we vote another party. Maybe it's time we vote Libertarian. We'll have to find out what that's all about. That's what my guest here today is. Stephen Fielder. Maybe he can tell us what the Libertarian Party is all about. Sounds communistic, doesn't it? We'll find out. Don't go away. I'll be right back. I got to pay some bills. Some kind of librarian associate. Do people ever get it confused? Well, only in the spelling of it, I think. Um, libertarian comes from the word liberty, and we are the party of liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, libertarians stand for a, a free economy. Oh, I buy that. I buy that. Individual liberty and peace and that is how can anybody argue with that our platform well i don't see how they can well why is it that when we think of the uh, well we really don't know much about the libertarian party I mean, well, who are the folks in it i mean you're you're the chairman of the national libertarian party ballot access committee i mean and yet i've never heard of you uh, you know i mean i've heard of all kind of guys in the democratic party all kind of guys in the republican party but why haven't i heard of you i mean and what why should I be excited about that party's ballot access committee? I mean, are they doing something to you? Are the boys uh, making it tough for you? Well, essentially, what we have in the United States is a series of 50 different states, each with their own individual ballot access laws. Okay. Now, the Libertarian Party is the third largest party in the United States. Really? And uh, has been for some time. Uh, you may know who the names of the national chairman of the Republican and the Democratic parties are, but I don't. Okay. So it's really not unusual that, a some, that someone would not be familiar with, uh, with the party officials or the people that are doing the party But I don't work. even know who your head guys are. I don't know anything about you. Well, our, our chairman's Jim Turney. And, uh, Who's Jim Turney? Well, he's a fellow that runs uh, a, a business... Uh, called Liberty Audio in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. He's been in the movement for approximately 20 years and is something of a party historian, and he was chosen as our leader at our last convention in Phoenix. Now, when you say, for instance, who ran for president as a libertarian this year, the past, the past election? David Berglund was our most recent presidential candidate. Uh, he is an attorney uh, in... Uh, 
California, Southern California, mm -hmm. and uh, he had previously run for uh, Senate on the Libertarian ticket in uh, 1980, I believe. Have any of your guys ever made it to Congress? No, we don't have any congressmen elected. We have been able to elect uh, a couple of um, state legislators okay. in Alaska. And the Libertarian in Party Alaska. was responsible for repealing the Alaskan income tax. Alaska used to have an income tax, and Dick Randolph introduced a measure that, uh, that did away with the Alaskan income tax. So you're really a very small party, though. I mean, you might be the third largest, but you're small in comparative. If you've only got a couple guys up in Alaska, you have none in the United States. Well, remember, Alaska is part of the United States. That's well, true. All right. Touche. Uh, Touche. You're, you're, you're getting me on details. I've never been a detail man. Come on. We Make these sweeping generalities. I mean, we do have a number of local people that have been elected, both in partisan offices and nonpartisan offices. Uh, city councilmen and so forth. Um, but in the American party system, you have to win a majority or at least a plurality before right. you're elected to office. And that means until you reach the point where you have uh, 25 or 35 percent of the people voting your way, it's very difficult to win an election. Well, you don't have the media. Nobody in the media ever talks about you. That's part of your problem. Well, part of our problem then relates directly to ballot access, and that's why I'm involved here. Uh, having been involved in some libertarian campaigns, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to get the media to pay attention to what you have to say. Yeah, we're if a bunch of not jerks. Yeah, we're a bunch of jerks. If we, you know, we, we get into this, we know everything, and if we don't think, uh, you know, you're interesting, we ignore you. Well, more important than that, before you can be considered a credible candidate, you need to be on the ballot. And, and you can't get on the ballot? Well, it's very difficult. It's a very expensive proposition. Um, my budget for getting the Libertarian Party on the ballot mm -hmm. from my committee mm -hmm. is on the order of $600,000. And that doesn't include what I expect the state parties and the candidates to do for themselves. Overall, putting a presidential candidate on the ballot in all 50 states uh, is a $2 million proposition. But, uh, but I <clears> thought that the government helps other parties. The government does have matching funds available mm -hmm. uh, uh, for uh, candidates uh, who are willing to take them. Now, so far, the Libertarian Party has always refused to accept these funds because we don't believe it's right that the American people should be coerced to give money to support our views. And we oh, but you've never been in a union. I'm in the teachers' union, and I, I disagree with them all the time. And my dues automatically, I can't. If I don't join them, I can't even be with them. They do it all the time around here. Haven't you noticed? Know well, the thing about, uh, the, thing about uh, the system that's used to collect these dollars that is, is that if you don't pay the dollars, the IRS will show up with a gun and take your money or seize your bank account or lock you up for failure to pay taxes. So Ooh, to show that our IRS too. to show that on the basis of principle, mm -hmm. and we are the party of principle, that we are opposed to these things, we have so far not accepted any of the federal matching funds for our for our candidate. Okay, so you have a principle. Yes. And you're you're keeping by it. Yes. But you're going down because of your principle. I I don't think so. I think that the party has grown uh, tremendously over the uh, over the last few years. Um, and that, uh, that uh, with the prospect of a, a, uh, a Gary Hart, George Bush race in 1988, we have the chance to, uh, to grow like never before. Are, are most of the people that get involved in the Libertarian Party uh, like disenchanted Republicans? We have people that join the Libertarian Party from both the right and the left, from both the Democrats and the Republicans. That should be I, fun. I call myself the radical center. You're the radical center. Well, why do you call yourself that? I mean, what's so radical about you? Well, I mean, we take a lot of what the Republicans have to say about uh, a free economy. Okay, you buy that. We accept that. And we take a lot of. I buy of that the, too, by the way. We take a lot of what the Democrats have to say about individual liberty and accept that. And to that, we add uh, a peace platform, mm -hmm. that, the, that the United States should be concerned of its own defense and not subsidizing countries like Japan 
and Germany mm -hmm. who are perfectly capable of paying for their own defense. That's one reason well, why there's so it. much unemployment. Yeah, but you know, in the Japanese thing, it's interesting. Uh, one percent of their budget goes for uh, national defense, but that's by the Constitution that we jammed down their throats after we conquered them. And one percent of their gross national budget is how it's based. And when you really get into that, that's the fascinating thing, because they have such a gigantic uh, defense, uh, a gross national budget that one percent gives them the eighth largest army in the world. And they don't even call it an army; they call it a, a home defense system. That blows me away. You know, here we force them. And I agree, they ought to be paying even more if they're going to have that influence in that part of the world. We're really picking up a lot of their cost. But, uh, you know, I, of course, I believe we ought to mind our own business and you let people have what they want. Hell was always giving people what they want. I think if the uh, Sandinistas want communism, let them have it. They'll soon tire of it. Let them have it down in Cuba. I mean, after all, the guy hasn't had an election in 28 years. That ought to teach them all they want to know about democracy. And there has to be Cubans down there who are, are beginning to say, wait, there must be something wrong. I agree with you. Good. Maybe I'm a libertarian in disguise. Maybe I, maybe uh, I come out of the closet as a libertarian. How about that? Many people are. If you ask people uh, a series of questions designed to, to find out what part of the political spectrum they fall in, about one out of four people probably are libertarians but they and don't, don't realize it. They don't know it. That's right. Well, see, again, then that's, that's the job. I, don't, I, I doubt whether they ever teach about the Libertarian Party in high school, do they? I mean, are they in Magruder's, that deadly dull book? You ever uh, read Magruder's? No, I That's the I one that the that most I popular have. government book in, in America, and it, it bores more kids about democracy in our government than any book alive, and it should be one of the most interesting subjects, you know. Well, to those kids, I would say that, uh, I would say something that I've discovered, and that is that one person really can make a difference, and it really is important to go out there and work for what you believe, because one person can change the course of American history. Now, if I were a libertarian, the first thing I'd be doing, not spending money on the ballot, I'd be whining and dining the media. I'd, 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 I'd infiltrate it. That's what the communists have done in our media. You don't think they're spending money to, to get their boys in places? Or they're paying off some of these guys. You know, you get a reporter who's making 500 bucks a week. And you say, I'll give you another 500 bucks a week. I don't want you to slant anything. All I want you to do is omit certain items in your, in your stories. If they sell defense secrets for 25,000 bucks, and one of these bombers, these uh, European or uh, Russian bombers, cost millions of dollars, that's cheap at half the cost. I'd be subverting the media, because the media is the one odd man out in this whole democratic thing. Our forefathers never saw, foresaw anything like what we have today, where guys like myself can get off and mouth and be duplicated, Xerox, instantly Xeroxed in thousands of televisions. That's just locally. And you get guys like Dan Rather and who's this guy that I really dislike on ABC that's always giving the president a hard time? No, Koppel, he's, I don't know what's wrong with him. Sam Donaldson. I mean, here's a guy who, uh, I, you know, and yet he comes on television and all of a sudden, he is magnified millions and millions of Sam Donaldsons telling me what my president just told me. I mean, the forefathers never saw that. That's the thing. If I were you guys, throw out your ballot committee. Get going on the media and start working on those boys because until you get your story across, nobody's going to know you. I'm in the media and I barely know anything about you. And I'm embarrassed because you're talking about things that I think are very important. What do you think about that? Well, <clears throat> I, I'm afraid I'm not in a position to endorse or condone <laughs> <clears throat> buying, off, uh, buying off the press. Uh, I don't think you have to buy them. I think you have to just get in there and do your own thing. Have you read Insight Magazine? No. You haven't? No. Insight Magazine, I think, is one of the best magazines I've ever read. It's, it's, it's sort of the balance. It's the other side of time and Newsweek, which are very liberal and very tied up with the Democratic Party and, the, you know, all these uh, Boston, New York ideas, you know, the, uh, the, the liberal fascists, the idea that you have to follow the dogma of the, 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 the left or the liberal dogma or somehow you're crazy or there are limousine li liberals, you know what I'm talking about, the kind of person that talks about let's all be brothers except they live economically out in Bloomfield Hills or wherever where the average guy can't afford to live. You see, and they practice their own form of discrimination, economic discrimination. And you got all these guys. And that magazine, I think it's put out by a church group called the Moonies, but you never know it. You'd have to, you'd have to search backwards and forwards. And yet it's a well-done magazine, and it presents another side. 
You guys ought to be into the media. Don't you have your own magazine? We've got our own newspaper, the yeah. LP News. It's written, the LP News? It's, uh, it uh, is edited by Carl Hess. Who uh, who uh, is quite a cult figure mm -hmm. uh, and uh, quite no well relation known. to Herman. No. Okay. Um, but we have a we do have a a, a respectable publication yeah. that presents our views. But where I is think, it? I never see it. I think one thing that we have to do in order to get uh, people to understand that we are here and here to stay is to be on the ballot and show people that we're here. All that we ask. Uh, of the voters in Michigan or any other state is the opportunity to be on the ballot and present our views. Won't they let you on the ballot? Oh, it's very difficult. In Michigan, for instance, we have to collect uh, petitions signed by over 16,000 voters right. uh, in order to get on the ballot. I sign any petition you give me. If well, you come up to me, I believe in the democratic process. I don't care whether you're left, right, you know, black power, white power, it doesn't bother, I'll sign it because I believe in the democratic process. Well, we're going to have a petition drive beginning very shortly here in Michigan. One of the reasons I'm here is to help organize the mm -hmm. petition drive. And uh, we're going to begin t petitioning and we would ask that those people in Michigan who want to learn more about libertarianism and the Libertarian Party sign our petition so that our candidates can be on the ballot and address the issues and get some of these talk things talked about that, uh, that need discussion. Do you have a mailing address or a phone number that we can call anybody locally about? Did you have that? I Did don't have it, it with me? me. I believe it may be on your press release. On the press release. Can I give that number? Yes, if you uh, would, please. This is a uh, wanted people to picket and pass out literature at a local post office. Is that the same number? 332-7834. Wait a minute. 332. Three, I got it here. Okay, 332-7834. Three, three, now, let me give that number. In other words, if they call that number, they'll talk to Emily, and Emily will help them out and give them the information or at least direct them to the right part of the Libertarian Party. That's Let's right. give that number again. People never have pencils when we do these things. So it's 332-7834. Three, three, now that's Emily Salvet, and okay. she, is, uh, she is one of the leaders here in the Metro Detroit Libertarian Party. Okay, 332-7834, three, 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 that's the number to call. Right. Ask for Emily, and of course she'll help you out with the information on the Libertarian Party. 332-7834. Three, three, have I given it about five times over a period of time? Only given it four? I give it once again. Three, three, two, seven, eight, three, four. And of course, you'll probably get crank calls now. They're obscene call the Bell Telephone Company. I think it's neat that you guys are out there jumping around like this. You got, you got a fellow from Dearborn. Can I give his name? Is that, is that permissible? Bill Shotley. He's a, he's a Dearborn person who's very, very active. Well, he's the editor of the little local Metro. Metro Detroit Libertarian paper. Can you get it? Can we show that a little bit? Is that possible? I just want to just show what it is. And, uh, okay, can we see that all right? Okay, well, that, that's great uh, that people know about it. Now, you're mentioning that it's tough in this town. Is Michigan a particularly hard state to get it on? Uh, Michigan is probably a, a medium difficult how state. do we how do we hassle third parties I mean how do we in the state I mean obviously if you're UAW you get anything you want you know if you're uh, the Democratic Party and the UAW have kissed you and blessed you you know all kind of magical things happen for your candidacy uh, but what about the uh, what about the the little guy here I mean do you have to do something I mean do you have to get more money or do they make it so many days or What's the problem? All we have to do is collect 16,000 signatures but you have a time limit. over a period of six months. Is that and good enough? That's, uh, that's not terribly unreasonable okay. compared to what some of the other states have done to us. So you think that there's a chance that you guys can move ahead here in Dearborn? Or oh, in I'd, Detroit, I'm, I'm very confident that we will be on the ballot uh, 488 in Michigan with our candidates. Okay, you know, I buy that, but I still go back to my original the premise. Premise, I will try premise as a nice word. Uh, that you, you folks ought to really do a media number. Now, have, have, you, have the Detroit News done an article on you? I'm, I'm not from Detroit. From? I'm from uh, West Virginia. I live in West Clarksburg, Virginia. West Virginia. Clarksburg, first girl I ever dated was from Clarksburg, West Virginia, and I drove a 19, 
1941, no, 1939 Mercury all the way down there to see her. Clarksburg, where is this? The world gets small. Anyway. Well, I'm from Martinsburg. Oh, Martinsburg. I yeah. thought you said Clarksburg. Well, I mean, you let me get that lecture and it was the wrong town? Well, Clarksburg's a fine town, too. Oh, thanks. Anyway, no, I, listen, I'm all, I'm all for people jumping up and down and carrying on. Well, listen, let me give that number again before I say goodbye, okay? All right. 332-7834. Call that number, and hopefully somebody from the Libertarian Party will help you out. Steve Fielder, thank you for being my guest. Good luck. I thank believe you. in democracy, just like you do. Good to see a guy come all the way from Virginia to West Virginia to talk about things that he cares about. Well, I very much appreciate the opportunity. Come back. Come back. Any, any of your guys can come back anytime. Russ Gibb, I'll thank be you. back right after these announcements. Wait, no, I, listen, I'm all, I'm all for people jumping up and down and carrying on. Well, listen, let me give that number again before I say goodbye, okay? All right. 332-7834. Call that number, and hopefully somebody from the Libertarian Party will help you out. Steve Fielder, thank you for being my guest. Good luck. I thank believe you. in democracy, just like you do. Good to see a guy come all the way from Virginia to West Virginia to talk about things that he cares about. Well, I very much appreciate the opportunity. Come back. Come back. Any, any of your guys can come back anytime. Russ Gibb, I'll thank be you. back right after these announcements. There's another political party out there, and the Libertarians. You may want to check out you know, from some more information about it. And again, that number is 332-7834. That's the number to call for the Libertarian Party. And maybe you get some information. Just call them and say, hey, send me some stuff. I want to know what this is all about. <laughs> they believe, I think, in freedom. Interesting concept in today's world where everything is controlled by you-know-who in Washington. Hey, for those who have time to view the show today, I'd like to say thank you. For those who have time to drop me a card or a letter, I'd like to say thank you. But most of all, I'd like to thank you for just being you. Russ Gibb at Random.